Hello everyone. Uh, as part of a uh, series of video lectures on rock mechanics and starter control, uh, in this uh, video lecture, I'm going to cover uh, the remaining portion of uh, chapter four. Uh, and uh, in chapter four, uh, this particular video lecture is going to be part four. Okay. Uh, before I start, let's recap what uh, we had discussed in the uh, last 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 video video lecture. Like in the last uh, video lecture, we had discussed about uh, what is subsidence and uh, what are the different uh, modes of subsidence uh, on, and uh, the types of subsidence like uh, subcritical width of extraction, critical width of extraction, and the supercritical width of extraction. So we know pretty well like uh, the substance is nothing but due to mining activity, the change in profile of the ground, the change in surface topology of the profile of the ground due to the mining activity that is known as subsidence. So depending on the width of uh, extraction, they are classified into uh, three types. One is called the subcritical and the critical. Second one is the critical and the third one is supercritical. So in case of subcritical width of extraction, uh, there is no maximum subsidence on the surface. Uh, because even though the subsidence is there, but in no place uh, it don't it, it contains the maximum subsidence. Whereas in uh, in case of since uh, in case of subcritical, no, uh, the width of extraction is very small. Uh, coming to the critical width of extraction, uh, the, uh, there will be maximum subsidence at a single location on the surface. Okay. Uh, whereas in case of supercritical width of extraction, the maximum subsidence will be at more than one uh, one location. Uh, the reason is uh, since the width of extraction is uh, large, so the amount of subsidence on the surface will be more. So that's what it is. So in case of supercritical width of extraction, the maximum subsidence will be at more than one lo uh, one location. Then we also discussed the, the uh, change of subsidence profile with the progress of the working. Uh, so what exactly did this is, is like initially, let us say the width of the opening is subcritical. As the phase of progress due to mining activity, it changes to width, be, width will become critical and with the further progress of the mining activity it will become super critical so <coughs> the subsidence profile diagram basically uh, what we discussed in the last last session was like how exactly the profile changes from uh, subcritical to critical and then finally to the super critical then we discussed about the various basic terminology that are being used in subsidence the terminology such as what you call angle of drop angle of break and the inflection point are the point of inflection that uh, these three uh, topics so we are discussed basic definition we discussed in the last session so just to recap like uh, uh, what do you call what is angle of draw so angle of draw is nothing but the angle made by the uh, line joining the edge of the opening and the point of zero subsidence uh, just a point of zero subsidence uh, with the vertical that particular angle is called angle of draw so what exactly is that just a minute uh, let me let us say this is what the width of the opening let's choose uh, something different color okay something like that. okay uh, let us say uh, this is our surface So here uh, we are discussing about angle of draw. Let's say this is the surface and this is the edge of the opening. Uh, let me choose one sec. One line, which is on the edge of the opening. So now what is angle of draw now? Angle of draw is nothing but the angle made by the line joining this edge of the opening and the point at which there is the subsidence is zero on the surface. If I join these two, join these two again, what are the angle that I will be getting? This angle. Okay. What are the angle that uh, made by these, this line with vertical is known as angle of draw. So this is what exactly the angle of draw. Next one is angle of break. Angle of break is nothing but let's say so what are the in the earlier video lecture we discussed in detail like uh, it is a line joining the edge of the opening and the point of uh, what you call the maximum tensile stress the stress which is of tensile nature as i said right here uh, these forces are subject to uh, like the area which is present immediately above the opening they will be subjected to the compressive kind of forces 
whereas the uh, the area present after the edges of the four after the edges of the opening or the beyond the edges of the opening it, it is subject to some kind of tensor so this is a kind of tensile forces the tensile and whereas this comes to this part is that is called that is there are uh, compressive nature like this okay this is all tensile okay so now what is angular break angular break is nothing but line joining the edge of the opening and the point of the where the shear stress is maximum let's say this is the point okay so this one with vertical this angle this angle is called angular break or fracture plane okay next one uh, the inflection point inflection point is nothing but on a substance uh, strain profile curve where it changes from strain changes from tensile to compression or the compression to tensile that point is called where it changes uh, from in other words it's also known as the curve which changes from convex to concave or concave to convex so that particular point is called point of inflection okay uh, let's move on next we also discussed about the various components of subsidence profile various components of subsidence profile okay so i uh, will uh, i'll continue with this uh, this part again i'll reiterate this one so that uh, just to maintain the continuity of the topic okay okay uh, let's move on uh, right uh, what are the topics which i'm going to cover as part of uh, this video lecture is uh, the component of substance profile uh, next uh, we'll try to analyze uh, like what you call the the st uh, strain profile of this uh, see in case of uh, different width of extraction like uh, the first case is subcritical width of extraction what uh, how exactly the substance profile looks like and what would be the corresponding strain profile and the horizontal displacement profile this is in case of uh, subcritical whereas uh, in case of uh, critical substance okay, in critical width of extraction uh, we'll uh, we are going to discuss about how exactly the substance profile looks like and uh, st corresponding strain profile and horizontal displacement profile similarly in case of supercritical width of extraction uh, we are going to discuss how exactly the profile of the substance looks like next the strain profile and the horizontal displacement profile so with respect to the what you call the different width of a uh, width of extraction how exactly the corresponding profiles will uh, look so how exactly the what you call the different profiles will changes okay those uh, topics we will be discussing as part of this video lecture next the last topic uh, as part of this lecture i am going to discuss is the what are the various factors that influence the amount of substance okay these topics i am going to cover as part of this video lecture let us see uh, okay this is where we stopped in the last video lecture like uh, like uh, what are the various components of substance profile so if you look at here uh, this is as i said right uh, the components uh, which are present uh, one second there are what compressive nature these are of compressive nature this we already discussed in the previous uh, uh, class this is of compressive nature the, these forces are compressive nature coming to the edge of the opening they are subject to some kind of what tensile because they are trying to close the opening this part These are subjected to these forces are subjected to tensile. Okay. These are of what tensile forces. Okay, these are tensile forces now. No, so if I in this uh, see if I join all these lines, these points right, which are subject compression as well as tensile. the profile that we are going to get it that is also that is known as what you call the subsidence profile this is known as what subsidence profile okay this is subsidence profile or it is also known as uh, subsidence trough okay next we will discuss about uh, what you call uh, how exactly the strain curve look at here this is a strain curve what exactly the strain means what the change in length to the uh, what the uh, original length right so in this case this is a horizontal strain curve so from this uh, edge of what you call the zero subsidence point to the edge of the opening the strain is of what the uh, what they call 
uh, the uh, movement of the rock mass overlying rock mass it is of tensile nature so the strain that we are going to get is of what due to horizontal movement and uh, which is of tensile nature this is what exactly the strain profile next uh, the one which is present in between the uh, width of the opening that is uh, that is of what compressive nature see look at here th this curve is what horizontal strain profile this curve so here if you look at this one why it, be, it has become zero here it is because there won't be any article on the middle of the opening right uh, like uh, there will not be any uh, vertical horizontal movement only the vertical movement is present that's why the horizontal displacement will be zero or the horizontal strain profile is zero that's why it is zero so this is of a tensile nature and uh, uh, next one this is of what the compressive nature again this is of tensile nature uh, sorry again this is of compressive again this part and this is again the tensile part okay hope you got it this is what this is how exactly what you call the tensile profile looks like now we discussed one more point like what is point of inflection point of inflection is nothing but the point look at here let me draw this uh, on the profile right the point so uh, let me choose a different color yep um, this is one point this is another point okay if you look at here the point at which the strain profile curve changes from tensile to compression or from if you look at the other way around like this is from compression to tensile so this point is called point of inflection or point of inflection that's what exactly it is this point is called point of inflection guys so this point is called what point of inflection once again is called point of inflection so this is this curve is called point of inflection when it changes like this okay so so far we discussed about the, uh, the the subsidence profile next this corresponding strain curve then this uh, this curve represents the displacement curve displacement nothing but uh, what you call the, the distance between the two points along a Uh, given direction okay so what exactly the displacement here see the displacement will be maximum or the movement of the horizontal movement will be maximum up to uh, till the edge of the opening so it is moving moving like this and it reaches the maximum then what happens now it, it becomes zero because there won't be any horizontal movement here it is of wall of vertical just uh, it is something like you know uh, uh, simply dropping this particular piece of rock mass into the below ground below this level right If straight away it is going down there won't be any kind of what you call horizontal distance horizontal movement so there is the reason it has become zero here so if you look at this displacement curve it started from here and reaches a maximum at the edge of the opening the moment will be maximum at the edge of the opening okay then gradually it reduces the same is the case other one so this curve represents what the displacement uh, displacement curve okay so far we discussed about the subsidence curve and the what you call the strain profile and the displacement curve curve then there are a few other terms that we will be using as part of uh, this one uh, like uh, there is that is called tilt tilt is nothing but how exactly this curvature changes how exactly the slope of this curvature changes that is called tilt okay this will be discussing in the next uh, coming slides okay next one uh, like we'll, uh, we uh, like we also we already discussed about angle of draw what is angle of draw now the angle made by <coughs> lying tiny the edge of the opening to the point of zero subsidence With the vertical, this is called angle of draw. This is what we discussed. Okay, this is what exactly the angle of draw. Okay, this is called angle of draw, and we also discussed about the angle of break. So these are all the basic uh, different types of terminology that we'll be using as part of subsidence profile. As part of subsidence profile. Next one. Uh, let's move on. Let me clear this. Uh, all right okay so let us discuss uh, what are the what you call this is very important various components of subsidence profile okay and the subsidence and its related parameter okay let us discuss one by one so we discussed about the subsidence trough okay there's nothing but the subsidence s see on any cross section the vertical component of the surface moment vector is called uh, surface subsidence it is generally points downwards it generally points downwards but sometimes it points upwards this is a very rare case 
so generally it will go on and the what, what exactly the substance is the change in profile of the ground is called subsidence that is being denoted by the profile is being uh, represented by means of some differential equation okay that is uh, called subsidence profile curve okay next coming to the displacement displacement nothing but what we discussed about the what you call the uh, displacement curve so if you look at right uh, if you if you look at the previous slide this is displacement curve okay it will be like displacement will be uh, what you call the more maximum at the edges of the opening and again it will be what you call the uh, zero at the what you call the uh, middle of the opening then again you know on the other side of it it, it is it will moment will be maximum at the edges of the opening this curve is called displacement curve okay so that's what on any cross section the horizontal component of the surface moment vector is called surface horizontal displacement okay so it generally points to, uh, toward the center of the subsidence basin am i right it it is points uh, centrally generally points towards the center of the subsidence it, it will be pointing like this because uh, okay it will be maximum maximum nothing but the moment will be maximum towards the center right <coughs> it is something like <coughs> whenever we make an opening okay the whatever the surrounding rock mass that is present it will always try to close that particular open right so due to the lateral moment of the strata so that's what exactly the displacement we are talking about okay displacement is nothing but what and any cross section the horizontal component of surface moment vector is called surface horizontal displacement it is generally points toward the center of the subsidence basin okay in steep uh, terrain it moves along uh, along the down dip direction so in this case it always moves toward the center next is slope slope is nothing but if your curve is changing right see on any cross section the difference in subsidence between the two end points of a line section is divided by the horizontal distance between the two points is called slope of the slope of the curve this slope is nothing but if you if you are vertical uh, like uh, if you go to the higher classes right there the subsidence profile is being represented with uh, some uh, what you call the some differential equation if someone wanted like what is the slope of the uh, slope of the curve then we can all we need to do is slope of the curve is represented by ds by ds nothing but the differential differentiation of this particular subsidence profile curve okay so what exactly this one here see nothing but see on any cross section the difference in surface subsidence between the two end points okay of the line section divided by the horizontal distance between them so nothing but uh look at here let me illustrate this one something like this go back yeah mm, let me take uh, any two points just a minute uh. yeah. let me take uh, this point put a little bit bigger one okay yeah and this is another point if you look at here the elevation difference between these two points is how much this much let me choose a different color this much because it has moved, moved this one right next one the corresponding horizontal distance is this so this point and this will give the slope of the curve this is what exactly the slope of the curve so the elevation difference between that these two points and the subsidence profile uh, divided by the horizontal how was the how much was the horizontal distance so that will give the slope it is something like this so you got like this and this is the elevation difference and the, this distance i wanted this is the slope this is slope so how much is the, this is the elevation difference and this is what the corresponding horizontal distance so that uh, this uh, that ratio is gives what some angle between them so that is called the slope of the curve this is the slope of the curve okay so let's move on uh, just a minute okay that's what exactly the slope of the curve next one the curvature curvature is nothing but on any uh, cross section the difference in surface slope because how exactly the slope is being changing in what in up to certain extent the slope is something like this and there will be some kind of changing right so on any cross section the difference in surface slope between two adjacent line sections so slope difference divided by average length of two line sections is called surface curvature of these two lines of sections it is nothing but if you look at this curve 
if you look at this curve for the earlier it is curve like this is what the slope right and again this is what the slope you got it so if i take these two locations right how much is the vertical the change in its slope how much is the how exactly the what exactly the curvature represents curvature represents how exactly the profile the slope of the profile is going to change if you go on a vertical view from point to from different points okay so look at here on any cross section the difference in uh, surface slope between two adjacent line sections divided by average length of two line sections is called surface curvature of those two sections okay there are two types of curvature either it is convex okay convex or positive curvature concave which is of negative curvature. it could be so like what you call the one way this or the other way around right so either it is positive positive in case of curvature if the curvature is convex and the if it is of concave then it is of negative negative curvature okay next horizontal strain so yeah this we discussed actually right so on any strain profile on any cross section the difference in horizontal displacement between any two points divided by the what you call the distance between the two points is called horizontal strain i repeat say on any cross section the difference in horizontal distance between the two points if i take any two points how much is the horizontal distance okay divided by it's nothing but some kind of slope but what happened here we are measuring we are trying to determine the strain change in length to the original length so that's what it is so on any cross section the difference in horizontal displacement between any two points divided by the distance between the two points is called horizontal strain okay if the distance between the two points is lengthening that's nothing but if it is of tensile nature if it is increasing then what happens it is of tensile strains with a positive sign conversely if the distance between the two points gets reduced because uh, they are then moving downward right then if it is shortening it is of compressive nature with a negative sign there's nothing but this in a strain profile if it is of tensile nature that will be taken as positive and if it is of what you call <coughs> compressive nature that is taken as negative if you look at this diagram the strain profile this is what the strain profile right so this is of what the tensile nature up to this and then this is of what the compressive nature so this is taken as positive because there is a vertical increase in its length whereas this is there will be a due to compressive nature there will be a decreasing in its length so this is uh, in case of if it is if the strain is of tensile nature it will be taken as positive if it is a vertical if it is of what you call the compressive nature it is taken as negative okay that's what exactly it is uh, horizontal strain curve next one twisting on the surface this nothing but the uh, on the surface of the substance basin difference in slope between two parallel line section divided by distance between the two lines of sections is called twisting okay the, i think uh, this is beyond your scope okay anyway uh, let's move on uh, next uh, shear strain shear strain is the changes in internal angles of uh, square of the substance this is okay now let's move on a vertical angle of draw this we discussed assuming like like a rectangular worked out area the strata is affected by subsidence uh, take the form of obtuse pyramid the angle made by the sides of the pyramid with the vertical is called angle of draw is nothing but what we discussed right so angle be between the what you call the line joining the edge of the opening and the point of zero subsidence with the vertical that is called angle of draw and this is the angle of critical deformation is nothing but this is also known as angle of break okay uh let's move on next yeah this is of angle of break nothing but the angle between uh, what you call the uh, edge of the opening and point of the maximum tensile that is projected on the surface with the vertical that is called angle of break or angle of fracture so that particular plane will give what you call the uh, the plane along which there is a possibility of failure there is a possibility of failure due to tensile so that's why tensile that is why it is called angle of break see look at here uh, the angle between the vertical line at the opening edge and the line connecting the opening edge and the point of maximum tensile strain on the surface is called angle of break the ground surface at the point of maximum tensile strain is most more likely to place where the tensile crack occurs that's why it is called the plane of weakness okay and the last definition is inflection point inflection point is nothing but so it is a point on the curve right on the substance profile where uh, it which changes from 
what you call the curvature of the uh, the curvature of the profile will change like it changes from concave to convex or convex to the concave that particular point is called uh, called inflection point so look at here this is very important Uh, let's see. Okay, let's move back. Yes, let us say. Look at here. This is the point of inflection. Generally, uh, it will be lying lying in the edges of the opening. So, how much is uh, this? Right, this point. Right. So, this point. Let me put uh, another tape. This is very important, guys. So, okay. Mm -hmm. this this part so if this is s max how much is the subsidence on the edges of the opening amount of subsidence on the edges of edges of the opening or at the point of inflection this is equal to this is equal to half of that nothing but s max divided by 2 this is very important so generally you might come across these kind of questions in the exam or in the entrance okay so how much let's say in the subsidence profile s max is the maximum subsidence how much is the value of the subsidence at the point of inflection so it is equal to at the point of inflection the value of subsidence is equal to half of the maximum subsidence that's nothing but s max by 2 s max by 2 hope you guys uh, hope you got it uh, let's see this is s max by 2 so let's move on Okay. So this one. See, on the major axis, the subsidence based on the point dividing the concave to convex uh, uh, portions of the subsidence profile is called inflection point. At the inflection point, the subsidence is equal to half of the maximum possible subsidence at the center. Okay. The surface slope is maximum at the inflection point. Maximum at the inflection point. So the slope, because that is where it changes from. Uh, what you call it, the curve nature change from concave to convex or con uh, convex to concave okay those are all the what you call different definitions or different terminology that we will be using to represent the subsidence profiles now let us discuss what you call in different cases like what you call subcritical critical supercritical how exactly the corresponding uh, what you call uh, subsidence profile strain profile horizontal displacement profile it changes how exactly these things will change so okay that we are going to discuss as part of this slide look at here in case of subcritical subcritical is nothing but this is a subcritical width of extraction okay and you have got angle of drop this is what the angle of drop as we know like this is this curve represent what the subsidence profile curve subsidence profile that's nothing but there will not be any maximum subsidence so nothing but the subsidence profile this one The subsidence is less than the maximum. Subsidence. That's what the that's what we discussed in the previous slides, right? So what example subcritical? There will there will be a subsidence, but it uh, it no point. It contains the maximum amount of the subsidence. That's what exactly uh, in, uh, in uh, what you call the profile looks like in case of subcritical width of extraction. So you have the width of extract. The sub the amount of subsidence is less than the maximum subsidence. Next one, uh, like this, it also represents what is angle of break. so i i told you right angle of break is nothing but let's say this is look at here this is these are the strain profile horizontal strain profile so the upper part is represent what tensile and the lower part represents what compression so that's why the tensile if the strain is of tensile because it is moving like this right tensile it is of vertical positive these two are positive and these two are negative okay so look at here so basically if you look at here what is angle of break this is the maximum uh, tensile strain point this i have projected up to on the surface okay angle of break is nothing but the line joining listen carefully uh, the line joining this gives a better illustration one second okay yeah if you choose this you choose red color so look at here this is the maximum tensile this point i got it Okay, this is projection of maximum tensile point. Next one, uh, the line joining this this point, right? So the line joining the edge of the opening 
from the point of maximum tensile this is the maximum tensile point right maximum tensile on the surface this this one on the surface with the vertical this is called angle of break this is also known as the fracture plane because this is a rock is always weak in tensile so this is a fracture plane so we are in this uh, part of this diagram like this is a what you call subcritical width this is angle of drop this is angle of break and this is how exactly the subsidence profile looks like then we will discuss about the strain profile see the above diagram right we have uh, divided into number of sections so that you know to make the diagram very simple you can this one right so we just uh, what you call took a different uh, part of it so if you look at the uh, because uh, this i can superimpose as part of a single diagram but what happened right to make it more clear or to explain the concept very clearly like you know it has been divided into different layers okay so look at here if you look at this diagram this is a what you call the corresponding strain profile strain profile if you look at here this part is called tensile strain whereas the one which is in the middle this is a what compressive strain and nothing but the displacement is of it is of compressive one okay next one again this is of what tensile nature so this curve represents the tensile curve or the strain curve next coming to the horizontal displacement guys horizontal displacement okay uh, if you look at here if you look at here it's a basically in different the books okay it here sometimes you know it gives like this and a few other books uh, this particular portion will be uh, what you call represented something like this it all depends on what kind of convention that we follow look at here the arrow indicates that basically if you look at here uh, it is what you call from the tensile okay it has moving there is a maximum movement at the edges and the compression there won't be any movement it will be zero movement here obviously next if i move from the compression to tensile if i take this way right what happen now uh, what you call here it is zero in the compression uh, up to this one right? this is again going to be some kind of tensile it must be to be honest like it must be represented like this it should be like this. so again it's going to be some kind of tensile and coming back to this one okay either way it's uh, fine like uh, if you represent if you eliminate this and you know what you call represent this or if you represent this one it all depends on what kind of so sign convention that we follow okay so basically this curve represents the horizontal displacement curve so this is about uh, what you call in case of subcritical profile uh, subcritical yeah like how exactly the substance profile strain profile horizontal displacement profile it's like okay let us move on yes so uh, this is the same thing in case of subcritical how exactly the this one same diagram okay so this is what i was uh, talking about so i'll come back okay so this is in case of tensile so pre previous one is uh, it's the same uh, like whatever the diagram is there same diagram with a little dark and uh, shade that's it there's nothing much difference in this okay next one in case of uh, this is about the subcritical next critical critical nothing but what say in case of subcritical there will not be any maximum subsidence in case of critical the uh, vertical uh, see here there, at a single location there will be maximum subsidence right so that's what it is that's why this profile is called this profile is called what subsidence profile and this profile is called what strain profile strain profile nothing but it moved like this which is the maximum this is of what you call tensile strain this is of compressive strain and this is again compressive strain and this is of what tensile strain okay this is of tensile compressive compressive and again tensile okay this is the middle middle point of it so for a, so this is about the what you call the uh, on a strain profile which is of uh, the bottom part is compressive generally like in case of strain profile right, if the if the uh, what you call strain is of tensile nature it will be taken as positive and uh, this is this will be positive so something like if someone wanted it uh, people will represent this as positive this is also positive kind of thing whereas this will be negative Will be negative. That's this is how the sign convention people will follow. This is about the uh, this curve basically represents the strain profile curve, strain profile curve, and this curve represents the horizontal displacement. Look at here. So here the it all depends on the sign convention that we take. Look at here. 
it is moving like this so definitely the movement right right from the edges of the opening at the point of zero substance to the we come to the middle there will be a maximum movement the maximum movement will be what you call at the edge of the opening as if you come down to the center okay there will be maximum movement again what you call uh, here from tensile to what you call the maximum movement here there will, there will not be any horizontal movement because it's a simply simply at this particular point the substance is maximum nothing but there won't be any kind of horizontal movement it is of straight away going down right so since the horizontal movement is not there that's why it is zero next again you know from this point again you know this there will be a movement and again when come to the center it will be zero so this is how exactly in case of critical width of extraction different profiles looks like i repeat this is very important diagram guys uh, this is a critical width of extraction this is a what you call the angle of draw and we need to represent the what is what would be the corresponding angle of break two terms and next one is subsidence profile horizontal displacement profile and the what you call the tensile versus so what you call the compressive strain profile so these are all the different uh, what you call the uh, profiles that we need to draw to uh, to get the complete picture of uh, the what you call the subsidence uh, occurrence of subsidence in case of critical width of extraction okay so let's move on Okay. Uh, this is again the same thing. Uh, what you call? Look at here. Here everything is the critical width. There will be my substance will be maximum at a single location. Uh, this I should write something like S max. Uh, I to mention that. This must be something like what? S maximum substance. Sorry, this is only. It should be S. S max. Yeah. It should be S max. This is the maximum substance. This is what exactly the substance profile. Same. This is the same diagram with a different uh, convention. Like in case of horizontal displacement, it has yes to get a different sign convention. That's it. Okay. So, but this uh, this is the same uh, same as the earlier case. This is called the corresponding strain profile, and this is what the angle of draw, and this is what the angle of break. Uh, this is what the substance profile looks like. So tensile is represented as positive, compression negative, compressive negative, and tensile is positive. So the top portion is the tensile part, and the bottom portion is represents what corresponding uh, compression. Next, the horizontal displacement rate. Right? This is look at this one. This is the surface level. Okay, there will be what you call the maximum display movement here. And even if you represent this also, it is correct. It all depends like uh, okay how the sign convention looks like. So there will be maximum movement like this, and uh, this uh, this curve represents what the horizontal displacement curve. So these are the different curves. Uh, what you call the profiles in case of critical width of extraction next uh, let's so, so this is in case of super critical super critical nothing but what the maximum substance will be at more than one location let me say if uh, uh, if i draw if i draw a line using the edges of the opening right here so these lines will go like this right so uh, let me choose a different color yeah this is the portion this is the portion okay it is being it has cut the surface like this right This cut the this part. Yes, this part. Okay, in this portion, because this is a portion is being cut by the uh, these two lines, right? In case of supercritical width of extraction, the what you call the width of extraction is very large. The width of extraction is very large, and these two lines will meet above the surface. They see this is your surface level. Right here, this is your surface level. This is your surface level. They met above the surface, and this it cut the surface up to this portion is being cut by the up to these parts. It, it has cut like this. So in this portion, the substance will be maximum. So the maximum amount of substance will be not not at a single location. It will be over at a multiple location, nothing but over a given area. This entire area contains what the maximum amount of substance. That's what exactly the basic difference between uh, what called subcritical, critical, and supercritical. 
See, if, uh, if you look at it, let me reiterate. In case of subcritical, there will not be any maximum subsidence. And in case of critical, the maximum subsidence will be at a single location. It's, it comes like this. Only one location, there will be a maximum subsidence. In case of supercritical, the maximum subsidence will be at more than one location. Okay. Look at the, what you call the, uh, now look at here. This is what the angle of draw. And this is obviously, this is angle of break. And this is how exactly the subsidence profile looks like. This is what subsidence profile. Okay, subsidence profile. Next, this is the corresponding what you call in case of supercritical the strain profile. Strain profile. This is of what you call. Look at here. This is a complete compression. There won't be any what you call moment, right? So this is a horizontal strain profile. See horizontal strain curve. So this is of tensile nature. This is of compressive nature. But there will not be any horizontal moment, right? Because the, everything will go straight away down. No moment at all. So that's why it is zero. Then again, this is a compressive strain, horizontal compressive strain. And this is a what horizontal strain is of tensile nature. So this is how the curve looks like. Next, this is about the horizontal displacement. Yes, there is a horizontal displacement up to this point. There will be a horizontal displacement up to this point. There will not be any horizontal displacement because straight away it will go down. That's why no curve at all here. So that is how exactly it is. So this is about this is all about what you call the so angle of draw. Angle of break, subsidence profile, a horizontal displacement curve, horizontal strain curve in case of supercritical width of expansion. Okay, hope you got it. Uh, if you ask, if you face uh, come across these kind of uh, questions in the examination, all your job is to write uh, what you call draw these diagrams very neatly and uh, what you call and name the corresponding parts of it. Okay, uh, so let's go on. Same is the, this is again the same diagram, like a simple line diagram in case of supercritical width of extraction. Look at here. So these two lines will go and you know, they'll meet at one location. By the way, this is the portion. This is, this curve represent what? The, uh, what you call subsidence profile. And we need to mark the corresponding angle of draw and angle of break. This is the horizontal displacement curve, these two. And this is the corresponding what? Strain profile. So if you look at the strain profile, this is of tensile, horizontal strain profile. But this is of what, uh, tensile nature positive. This is of what, uh, what you call compressive nature, which is taken as negative. This is again the compressive nature taken as negative, and this will be of what uh, tensile nature, which, uh, which is of positive. So, this is how exactly the, uh, what you call the different profiles uh, okay, that can be drawn in case of supercritical width of extraction. Next, uh, okay, so far we discussed about what, uh, what are the different, uh, what color mode or methods of extraction, critical, subcritical, supercritical, and uh, different terminology used uh, to represent the article uh, substance profiles. Next, uh, in different, uh, and out of three cases, right? Now the three cases, how exactly the different uh, profiles can be drawn and how exactly they looks like, what exactly would be the uh, difference uh, between the, uh, dif uh, difference between those profiles that we discussed. Next, uh, uh, let's move on, like, uh, here we are going to discuss what, what are the factors that influence the amount of subsidence. So how much is the maximum subsidence, right? It depends on how much uh, the amount of subsidence on the surface. It depends on what are the, uh, the following factors. Look at here. The amount of subsidence on the surface of mining, uh, a mining area depends on the following factors. One is depth of the workings. Obviously, if the depth of the deposit is very high, it, it is at a greater depth. Right? Whatever the opening that you that you made, it may not uh, the disturbances or whatever, right? Causes okay, it will not even appear on the surface. Am I right? Okay, here. Let's say this is a uh, some kind of opening you made, and you are uh, what do you call deposit is present somewhere. Okay, at a very let's say this one. This is your surface. So this, if you look at this depth, this depth, it is of let us say. 500 meters, 600 meters, something like of sometimes even kilometers in case of metal parallel mines, they are at a very greater depth. So even if I make this small opening, so this disturbance might occur, uh, like what you call, whatever the starter moment, okay, due to this opening, that might take place only up to certain extent, like these layers, but it won't propagate up to the surface. It, 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 will not, it might not reach up to the surface. So nothing but the, if the, the deposit is present at a greater depth, the, there will not, there may or may not be any kind of what you call definitely the impact on the sub, subsidence or the change in profile uh, profile of the surface profile. Okay, will be 
and there's nothing almost nil there will not be any kind of substance on the surface so that's what exactly if the deposit is present nearer to the surface definitely it is subject to lot of what you call a uh, lot of substance on the surface the profile of this uh, vertical uh, surface will change like anything in case of shallow depth deposits so let us see so here uh, at the depth of the working increases the amount of subsidence on the surface will be less the amount of subsidence on the surface will be less since the deformation in the overlying uh, layers of the strata is confined to certain extent it will not be extended up to the surface right because it will not go up to the, since the depth is more next in case of shallow deposit the amount of subsidence will be extended up to the surface and there will be a change in the surface profile so this is about one of the factor which basically influences the amount of subsidence on the surface is the vertical depth of the workings let us say next one the width of the opening obviously the amount of subsidence on the surface depends on the width of the mine opening depending on the uh, depending on the width of the opening okay ma depending depending on the okay. depending on the width of the opening the, the, the substance is being classified into fallen types uh, one is what uh, so subcritical width of extraction critical width of extraction and the super critical width of extraction these three things uh, now we already discussed in detail okay in the earlier uh, slides or in the previous video lecture several times okay so in case of subcritical width of extraction there will not be any maximum subsidence on the surface okay next with the critical width of extraction the maximum amount of subsidence will be at a single location next in case of super critical width of extraction the maximum subsidence will be uh, at more than one location more than one location okay next as the width of extraction increases the amount of subsidence increases so it depends on the, so obviously the more width the more amount of the subsidence on the surface okay next coming to the thickness of the seam so first one is depth second one is width of the opening third one is thickness of the seam this is the aim of the mining activity is to extract the mineral deposit is to extract the mineral, mineral deposit to a maximum extent that's nothing but maximum percentage of extraction that we need to carry out so if the thickness of the seam is more the area of excavation increases which in turn uh, which in turn increases the maximum amount of subsidence because if you make a wider opening or a very big wide kind of thing definitely the corresponding amount of subsidence on the surface will increase next one is inclination of the seam okay with the inclination of the seam the angle of draw of subsidence profile changes okay so the angle of draw decreases on the right side look at here uh, let me draw this diagram let us say suppose let's say your seam is something like this no not like this i'm getting i'm not getting the inclined one okay this anyway this diagram i'll showing uh, i'll be showing in the coming coming uh, video lectures okay we'll be there we'll be discussing in detail okay so for now let's see uh, with the inclination of the seam the angle of draw of the substance profile changes the angle of draw decreases on the right side and uh, and increases uh, okay and increases toward the deep side so based on the inclination of the seam the extent extent of uh, subsidence profile will change so how much up to what extent the, you know, there will be a vertical the change in the profile of the ground that is being uh, what you call represented by means of angle of draw okay let's move on next again the method of mining yes the amount of subsidence on the surface depends on the method of mining in case of board and pillar or long wall mining with stoving okay the amount of subsidence on the surface 
uh, decreases because you are filling in case of uh, board and pillar the opening is very small in the long wall mining with stowing and you know, stowing is nothing but you are filling that gap with some inert material okay so in both cases the amount of substance on the surface decreases whereas uh, whereas uh, you need to correct this whereas with caving method Okay, anyway, this I'll correct it. Whereas with the caving method, the amount of subsidence will be more. Next, the another factor is the rate of extraction of the seam. Okay. Another factor is rate of extraction of the seam. Means at what rate we are extracting the, we are carrying out the mining activity. Let's say if the deposit is uh, what you call, we are trying to let's say in case of a long wall mining. Okay. Uh, let's say uh, by using what you call the more and more machinery, by deploying more machinery, we can uh, the, what you call uh, the extraction of the seam at a faster rate is possible. So if you extract the seam at a very faster rate, definitely there is the corresponding substance will be maximum on the surface. Or, it, or we are not, uh, what you call, we won't be giving enough time for the surface to settle down. So that's it. In such a situation, right, the substance is going to be some kind of uniform. So the extent and the amount of substance on the surface depends on the rate of extraction of deposit. With the faster rate of extraction, will not give much time for the surface to settle down, which results in uniform substance on the surface. Okay. Uh, next parameter is the physical mechanical properties of rock mass. So the amount of substance on the surface depends on the physical, physical and mechanical properties of overlying strata. So the mechanical properties such as compressive shear and tensile strength of the rock mass influences the subsidence okay so next last one is the geological disturbances obviously the presence of various geological disturbances such as faults folds joints and unconformities influences the amount of uh, amount and the extent of subsidence on the surface okay so with this uh, i'll conclude uh, this uh, video lecture okay thank you